Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to fix a Sony PlayStation 3 controller that is glitchy. What I mean by glitchy is this, as you can see on the screen. The only real tools that you're going to need are a Phillips screwdriver. Um, I clean the contacts with rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. Um, but you don't even need to do that. But I also use a material, uh, this is a piece of double stick foam tape. You don't need this, but you just need something. This is about an eighth of an inch thick, and uh, it does the job quite nicely. But anything, I mean, even just a piece of folded up paper would work. So let's get started. Okay, so we are going to be taking this apart, and to do it, it just requires a small Phillips head, that's kind of the plus shape or the star shaped screwdriver. There's come in all different kinds, but you need a small one. So no special tools. Go ahead and start unscrewing it. Alright, now we are just going to push down and just kind of pry apart the controller. Okay, like so. Okay. Here's the battery pack. So if you're having problems with the battery, then you just want to make sure that as you pry it open, that you don't pull on the wires. You just want to separate it and push that out. You may want a flathead screwdriver to do that. And then you have a screw right here. Okay, so I've looked at this. Now, I picked this up uh, used. I've got a PlayStation and a controller for uh, $40. The PlayStation needs some work, so we'll be doing that in another video. I didn't know the controller didn't work either. I would have uh, talked them down. But anyway, um, I've noticed there's some white residue on this solder joint. And so that may be a problem but before I break out the soldering iron, I am just going to kind of clean the contacts on this ribbon right here. And also on the flip side, here I'm going to clean these contacts. I'm going to put something underneath this ribbon. I'm really surprised this is how this was engineered. Um, it should have some kind of uh, way to permanently hold this these contacts in place because it wouldn't take much for this to cause problems so I'm guessing that that is causing interference uh, before these potentiometer control sticks but we'll see so I'll, I'll clean these up and to do that I just have some rubbing alcohol you can buy contact cleaner I just don't have any at the moment so I'm just going to use rubbing alcohol and a q-tip so I'm just gonna dip it in you don't want this sopping wet you don't want to get your components totally wet um, but a little moisture for this type of purpose is okay but this looks really brown and it should be kind of shiny in my opinion so we'll just rub this on see if we get any residue there was there was uh, sorry that was out of the camera but these right here, uh, they're, they're dark, and um, let's see if we're getting... Yeah, there's kind of some residue. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. So we're just going to kind of buff these, really. The alcohol will kind of clean off any light oxidization or grime, because I've noticed there is some grime. There's some dog hair in here. So after I clean these, I'm just going to kind of do an overall cleanup job. Some uh, some consoles that I've seen had like roaches in them. Some that I picked up here and there. Really disgusting. It's like maybe uh, oh, I don't see anything. But now, so now I'm just going to kind of clean up. There's some gross, like, yellow grime on here. I'm wondering if this was taken apart before. 
because there's this broken piece of plastic from a screw, kind of the end of the screw. So maybe they tried to fix this before. Okay, that is a very crazy thin layer to conduct. And so if that's not totally flush on there, it could be kind of mixing the signals, which is what I think is happening. So I'm going to put something underneath just to kind of push it up against these contacts here and uh, see if we can get this to, to recognize it and work properly. Okay, so I've cleaned these contacts here and I've cleaned the ribbon off, but now I'm going to get something to put under it. Okay, so I have this uh, double stick foam and I'm not going to use it as double stick. I'm just going to make it one side. So I'm going to leave, leave the, uh, let me zoom out a little. So I'm just going to cut a piece, maybe the width there, and stick it underneath. So I'll peel off the sticky tape on one side and put it under. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. And as you can see, that's maybe an eighth of an inch thick. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and peel this off. Just one side. And insert it underneath. I'm going to put it on the plastic underneath if I can. And I'll uh, just kind of use the screwdriver to move it into place. Okay. And then there's a little kind of plastic. All right. So there we go. Okay. That should provide enough pressure to place all those contacts against all of these contacts. And uh, this is a problem that occurs with uh, PlayStation 3 controllers, regardless if it fixes my current problem. So, go ahead and uh, seat this back. You just want to be gentle. Realign the holes. Take your time. You obviously need to put this back. Oh, we lost this here. in. Okay. Place the battery back. Make sure all of our buttons are seated properly. And you can tell even that foam is putting a little resistance on the whole unit. That should be okay, but we'll find out. Okay, we are back with the PlayStation. We are going to power it up and see if we can get this uh, controller. Act the way it's supposed to. Look at that. That's all it was. Awesome. Thanks for watching. If this helped you, please give me a rate or if you have any questions, uh, leave, leave that in the comment section below. And if you want more video repair, I go to Comic-Con, I do all kinds of fun stuff, all video game related, across the board, um, go ahead and um, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.